You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. All right, so what we're going to see in this video is a second qualitative method for analyzing differential equations. So last week we saw a slope field method, which was pretty cool. Now we're going to see a different one. It's called face line analysis. And you see it's very neat because it's a very quick way of uh, understanding the behavior of the solutions of a differential equation for all, kind of, all kinds of initial conditions. So it's a very powerful method. Okay, so we're going to focus on a very special type of differential equations. These are called autonomous key point here is that the right hand side only depends on x, so there's no dependence on the variable t here. Now this is a special class, but as we saw in class there's a number of problems, there's actually many problems in physics and biology and so on that can be modeled with equations of this form, so it's an interesting class to study. Phase line analysis, so what is the idea? The idea is to infer qualitative behavior of the solutions simply by inspecting the differential equation, but in a clever way. Okay, so why would we want to do that? Well, you're probably looking at this equation now and you're thinking, well, this is separable, so why can't I just use separation of variables to solve the equation? Well, you can, but in the process you have to integrate dx over f of x, and if the function f of x is complicated, you may not actually be able to integrate it. But perhaps more fundamentally, if you're, coming, if you're writing down an equation like that because you're modeling a system in physics or biology, one thing you may want to check is that the solutions you'll get are consistent, the behavior of the solution is consistent with what you expect from physics. Right? And phase line analysis provides a very quick way of checking that right away without solving the equations, so that's a good consistency check that your model makes sense. Alright, so what is phase line analysis? The idea is the following. We'll uh, draw a vertical line, which is called a phase line, which is really kind of parameterizing all solutions x of the differential equation. And then what we'll do on this line is very simple. We're first going to identify points where f of x is equal to 0. Why would we want to do that? Well, if the right-hand side is 0, so if x is equal to, for a certain value of x, the right-hand side is 0, what this means is that this provides a constant solution. So we've seen that already, or it's also called equilibrium solution. Because if you set x equals to that constant, then the right-hand side is 0, and the left-hand side is also 0. So these points will give us the constant or equilibrium solutions of the model. All right, and then what next? Well, what we're going to do next is identify regions on this axis on the face line where f of x is positive. Why would we want to do that? Well, if the right hand side is positive, what this is saying is that dx dt is positive, which means that the slope of the tangent lines to the solutions gear will be positive. Or in other words, the solutions will be increasing. So in the regions gear on the face line where f of x is positive, we know that the solutions are increasing. So that's interesting knowledge. And then of course we'll also do the same thing but with f of x being negative, which gives us solutions that are decreasing. And really, that's it. So with this very simple analysis, we get a good understanding of behavior of solutions, and then we can sketch the graph of all kinds of solutions, and you see that it's a very powerful and very quick way of getting an understanding of the solutions of the differential equation. All right, so let me do that in an example to make this a little clearer. So consider the equation that I've just written down here. So we'll see that one in class, by the way. That's a part of uh, the type of equations we use to model population dynamics. It's an example of the logistic model. Okay, so let's do face line analysis. So I'm first drawing my face line. This is the vertical axis corresponding to the solutions. And here I'll draw the actual solutions. And as we'll see, just from the face line, we'll be able to sketch the graph of solutions for all kinds of initial conditions. <clears throat> first step in the face line analysis, I find the equilibrium or constant solutions. So in this case, there's two values of x for which the right-hand side vanishes, x equals to 0 and x equals 1. So these, I just put some little dot here on my face line. And these correspond to constant solutions. On the right-hand side here, these are solutions that are not changing, so they're just horizontal line. This is 1, this is 0. These are my two equilibrium solutions. Okay, now I want to look at the regions uh, between the equilibrium solution. So if I look at x between 0 and 1, 
I want to look at whether uh, the functions, the solutions will be increasing, so whether the right hand side is positive or negative. So if x is between 0 and 1, this is positive, this is also positive, so the whole thing is positive. That's telling me that dx dt is positive, slow with tangent lines positive, solutions are increasing. So what I'll do is put little arrows upwards in the positive direction to show that the solutions in that region will be increasing. If I look at the region where x is negative, this is negative, this is positive, so the right hand side is negative, so the solutions are decreasing, so I'm going to put arrow, arrows downwards. <coughs> and in the region x greater than 1, this is positive, but this is negative, so the right hand side is negative, so again the solutions will be decreasing. So I put some arrows like this. And this is what the phase line analysis is. All right, now let's translate that in terms of solutions on the other side. So if I look first at solutions where x is negative, what these arrows tell me here is that those solutions will be decreasing for all x negative x. So if I start at this initial condition, for example, I get something like this. Here I would get something like this, and so on. On the other hand, on the other hand if I look at solutions between 0 and 1, they should be increasing for all values of x between 0 and 1. So if I start somewhere in here, I'll get something like that. I would just start here, I would get something like that, and so on. And for x greater than 1, then it will be decreasing for all values of x greater than 1, so I'll get something like this, and something like this, and so on. And that's great, because you see now, just by using the face line here, I've sketched the graph of the solutions for all kinds of initial conditions, and that was very, very quick. So now I can look at this and see whether the behavior of these solutions is consistent with what I expect from whatever physical or biological model I'm doing, I'm studying. All right, so that's pretty cool. <clears throat> now, uh, there's one more thing I want to say here, which is uh, some kind of nice property of equilibrium solutions. So I want to distinguish between the two types of equilibrium solutions here. So there's x equals to 0 and x equals to 1, but they're actually very different physically, but also mathematically. <clears throat> so what is different here? Well, x equals to 1 is a constant solution, but it is such that if you look at all the nearby solutions, so all solutions with uh, nearby initial conditions, they all tend toward the constant solution. So when that happens, we say that the equilibrium solution is stable. So let me write that in words. So if x equals x star is an equilibrium solution, then we say that it is stable if nearby solutions or nearby solutions tend towards it. And the neat thing here is that you can see that right away from the phase line analysis. So stable solutions correspond to points here where the arrows point towards the point, so point in the direction of the point. Right? Because if the arrow here points toward this a stable point here, this, uh, this equilibrium solution, that means that the solutions will tend toward it and here they'll decrease toward it. So that gives me a stable equilibrium. Now x equals to 0 is very different because now all nearby solutions get away from it. Right? So when this happens we say that the equilibrium solution is unstable. So it is unstable if nearby solution go away from it. And then again, again, it's obvious from the face line. If you have a point here where the arrows point away from the point, that means that this equilibrium solution will be unstable. And stable and unstable equilibrium solutions, of course, has a, an interesting meaning physically. So let me give you an example. I'm just going to take a little sheet of paper here, curl it like if it was an open cylinder. If I put the pen in the middle, so suppose I'm modeling the uh, motion of the pen, and if I put my pen in the middle, it stays there forever. So that's a constant solution. That's an equilibrium solution. If I start with very nearby equilibrium, uh, nearby initial condition, then it just falls and stays and goes towards the equilibrium solution. So that is saying that the equilibrium, equilibrium solution here is a stable one. That's the same thing as the mathematical definition of stability. Now if I, for example, look at open cylinder, but in the other uh, from the other side, and I put my pen on top of it, it will also stay there forever. So that's also a constant solution. However, 
uh, or equilibrium solution. But if I start now with very nearby initial condition, then my pen is just falling down. It's going away from the, uh, the equilibrium solution. So that means that the equilibrium solution here is unstable. So that's what it means to be stable or unstable. All right, so this was a phase line analysis. Now we'll do more examples in class. It's a very, very powerful method, so it's a good idea that you master it so you can use it right away whenever you uh, have an autonomous differential equation.